Hi everyone, welcome to IGCSE Study Buddy, where you can revise biology topics from the Cambridge IGCSE syllabus. If you are enjoying these videos so far, please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. This video summarizes part 2 of chapter 8, Transport in Plants. Let's talk about transpiration. Transpiration is the loss of water vapour from leaves. As water keeps leaving the leaves through transpiration, the water from the soil travels through the roots to the xylem and up to the leaves to replace the lost water. Water evaporates from the surfaces of the mesophyll cells into the air spaces and then diffuses out of the leaves through the stomata as water vapour. Water vapour loss is related to two things. The large internal surface area provided by the interconnecting air spaces between the mesophyll cells and the size and number of stomata. Water molecules are held together by forces of attraction between them called cohesion. So when water moves upwards in the xylem, each water molecule pulls the one below it as depicted in the picture. Therefore, we can say that a transpiration pull draws up a column of water molecules up the xylem vessels. As the water evaporates at the leaf and diffuses out of the stomata, more water is drawn up the plant from the roots. Please note that water does not travel through xylem vessels by osmosis. Osmosis involves the movement of water across cell membranes. But xylem cells do not have living contents, so there will be no membranes. A potometer like the one shown in the diagram may be used to measure transpiration rate. This apparatus should be set up under water to avoid any unwanted air bubbles in the xylem of the plant which may block the transpiration stream. Any joints must also be sealed and airtight. The method for this experiment is, a single air bubble is introduced into the capillary tubing. The tap on the reservoir is opened to add water to push the air bubble back to zero on the scale. A timer is started and a set time is measured. The distance the air bubble travels along the scale is recorded. So record the starting location as well as the end location. The experiment can be repeated with different environmental conditions. So we have to change the wind speed or temperature to see how it affects the transpiration rate. The faster the bubble moves, the greater the rate of water uptake and so the greater the rate of transpiration. The factors that will be tested are temperature, so the room temperature may be changed with a heater, and wind speed. This can be tested by using a fan at different speeds. The factors that affect transpiration rate are temperature, wind speed, and Humidity. So when the temperature is increased, the rate of transpiration also increases because the kinetic energy of water molecules increases. 
so they evaporate and diffuse faster from the mesophyll cells. When the wind speed is increased, the transpiration rate also increases because the wind removes away the water vapor surrounding the leaf faster. So water from the soil must quickly replace the water lost from the leaves. However, when humidity is increased, the rate of transpiration decreases because if the air surrounding the leaf has more water vapor, there will be a weak concentration gradient for diffusion to take place. So as you can see, increased temperature and wind speed increases the transpiration rate, while increased humidity decreases the transpiration rate. Let's learn about wilting. The water in a plant keeps it turgid and helps support it. If the amount of water a plant loses from its leaves is greater than the amount of water that is available in the soil to travel into the plant through its roots, then wilting will occur. The plant will become soft and droop because the cell walls become flaccid and will not be able to support the plant. So as you can see, in the first picture, there is sufficient water in the soil to replace the water lost by transpiration. In the next diagram, the plant has wilted because more water has evaporated from the leaves and there is not enough water in the soil. Finally, let's learn about translocation. All this while, we discussed how water is transported around the plant through xylem vessels. Now let's see how sucrose and amino acids are transported through the plant. Sucrose and amino acids are products of photosynthesis, which may be needed by certain parts of the plant for respiration and nutrition. These substances are transported by phloem tubes, which are made of living cells unlike xylem vessels. Sucrose and amino acids may be transported in different directions depending on the growth stage of the plant or time of year. The movement of sucrose and amino acids in the phloem from sources to sinks is called translocation. So what are sources? They are parts of plants that release sucrose or amino acids. And what are sinks? They are parts of plants that use or store sucrose or amino acids. So we can say the transport of sucrose and amino acids in the phloem from regions of production to regions of storage or use is called translocation. Some parts of a plant may act as a source and a sink at different times. So during winter, when less photosynthesis is taking place, the phloem tubes will transport dissolved sucrose and amino acids from storage organs such as roots to other parts of the plant so that respiration can continue. Also, during spring, when the plant is still growing, the storage organs, example roots, would be the source and many growing areas of the plant would be the sinks. After the plant has grown in summer, the leaves are photosynthesizing and producing large quantities of sugars. So they become the source and the roots become the sinks, storing sucrose as starch until it is needed again. So that concludes part 2 of topic 8, Transport in Plants. Hope you found this video useful. Thank you for watching and please don't forget to subscribe to IGCSE Study Buddy for more biology revision videos. Bye!